And finally, the team of the tourist club Rasvet from school No. 38 took first place. Captain Schwartz Alex. The guys flew up to the top step of the makeshift podium with a squeal. Alex was handed the cup, and he stood, shouting joyfully and shaking it above his head. For their victory, in addition to the cup medals, they were all given a certificate for the purchase of jasmine equipment in the Perival store. And returning home by train, they enthusiastically discussed what else the team needed to buy. A month later, the guys were getting ready to go hiking in the mountains and the reward arrived just in time. One tent needed to be replaced. And new pots wouldn't hurt either. Returning home, Alex excitedly told his parents about the competition. They came there for the third time, but before they always stayed somewhere outside the podium. And now the long-awaited event happened. Now they are the best touring team in the area. Mom smiled and listened in silence. Dad demanded details who set up the tent how they lit the fire, who showed how they provided first aid. How did the guys generally behave? Alex shared his impressions, knowing that his parents would support him, and maybe even point out his mistakes or give him some advice. After all, it was they who, from the age of seven, dragged him along the paths of the mountains. Even at that age, they put a backpack on him, and albeit symbolically, luggage. For a boy, there was no better activity than going on a hike with his parents. It usually lasted seven to ten days, but these were the days Alex looked forward to all year. They always discussed together where they would go this time. Mom suggested lakes and Dad said that his son had already grown up and he could try something more difficult. For example, go to the pass. You walk there wet all the time. What if he gets sick? He has more health than you and me combined the father convinced. And then, if he ever wants to climb, then this is an excellent test of his preparedness as a tourist. And then there was the heavy body of a truck, in which a 14-year-old boy was shaking along with his group, heading to the starting point of the route. The country road was full of potholes. Cars drove along it several times over the summer and took such enthusiasts to the mountains for active recreation. The rest of the time it was deserted. And of course, no one even thought of repairing it. The whole group was happy to finally jump to the ground when the truck arrived on site. The tourists took apart their backpacks and Jasmine E equipment, thanked the driver and headed to a nearby clearing to take a roll call, take inventory and begin the route. Mom, give me something from your backpack, otherwise you can barely carry yours. And mine is very light. Dad hid his smile. What are you saying, Alex? It's not hard for me at all. No, Mom, you are a woman and I am a man. All men's backpacks should be seven kilograms heavier. These are the rules, remember, I have the same one as you. You don't want to be considered a girl, do you? Okay, she took out cans of stew from her backpack and handed them to her son. Alex happily placed them at the bottom of his backpack. Mom, you are the best. Thank you. Thank you. You are quite an adult already. Alex didn't hear the last phrase. He quickly grabbed his backpack and went to the main part of the group behind the tent. There was a lot of water this year. Alex, who was short for his age, was almost waist-deep. He walked constantly wet, rubbed his feet, and did not have time to brush off mosquitoes, which the teenager loved very much. But it was all worth it. When the group arrived at the campsite, set up tents and sat down by the fire in anticipation of dinner, which was prepared by those on duty, the father took the guitar and began to sing. These were famous bard songs, hits of individual rock bands in my father's interpretation, and of course some military songs. The whole group sang along in unison. Even my mother, who was usually embarrassed to sing, because she believed that she had neither hearing nor voice. Dad had long entrusted his son with setting up the tent, as Alex coped with this task perfectly. The canvas was stretched like a string and did not leak. My son chose the place well, too. His father was always happy looking at his confident actions, and the son, knowing that his dad was watching him, tried to show all his best skills. 20-year-old Alex recalled all this when he was sorting out his things after his father's death. Dad quickly burned out from an incurable disease. His mother had been inseparably with him for the past few months, anticipating an imminent loss, abandoned all other matters. And after Dad left, she completely fell into depression and gave up on herself. The son, as best he could, tried to distract her with his stories and just his presence. However, my mother practically did not listen to him. Then Alex decided to start putting things in order on his own in the hope that his mother would see how he was doing everything wrong. 
She usually said that when she and her dad helped her with cleaning, and she started doing things herself. But mom sat indifferent to everything. Alex found a small yellowed notebook in which several songs with guitars and chords were written in his father's hand. He held it in his hands and tears welled up in his eyes. Then he raised his head. Mom, can I take this? The woman shuddered, returning to reality. What? I want to take this notebook. Here is the song that Dad sang around the fire. Yes, of course, son, take it. Maybe we can listen to them? The mother shrugged. Listen if you want. I am busy. Alex got into the computer, found a couple of songs and turned it on. The son sat down next to his mother and put his arm around her shoulders. Mom sighed strangely, her shoulders shook, and suddenly tears flowed from her eyes, and then sobs were heard. Well, thank God, thought Alex. He was very afraid for his mother's psyche, since during the time he was caring for the patient and after his death, these were the first tears and, in general, the manifestation of any feelings. The young man looked around, swung his foot and sent the ball in the opposite direction. The player it hit took a shot at goal and missed. I told you give the ball to me, called Sergio. Yeah, and there are four defenders around you. You simply wouldn't have time to reach him, but he missed. Happens. After such a warm-up, they returned to the grill, where the friends who took part in the match were grilling shish kebab. Oh, I wish I had a guitar now, Anthony said. What can you do? Friends became interested. I don't, but Timka can he winked at his comrade. Can you play guitar? Sergio widened his eyes in surprise. But there is a little. Why don't we know about this? Yes, somehow there was no need to brag about it. Wait, I'll get the tool now. Sergio was generally distinguished by the fact that he could get a canister of water or a tank in the desert. It depends on your luck. Many times he helped out the guys in difficult circumstances. Once upon a time they met in college, then life scattered them. But when Sergio called Alex with an offer to Jasmine to work in his auto repair shop, he was broke and almost by chance agreed. Now between the three of them they had a small network for repairing German cars from three car repair shops and each was responsible for one of them. The guys recruited their other friends, in whose reliability they were confident. And five years later, they have already become a tradition of celebrating summer like this a barbecue in a long-tested clearing by the river with ball kicking and funny conversations. Anthony, an avid fisherman, usually moved to the spot at about five in the morning, when there were no vacations yet, and by the time the rest of the company arrived he managed to catch about ten fish, from which fish soup was then cooked over the fire. He tried to involve Alex in this matter. Or rather, Alex himself asked to try fishing a couple of times. And not to say that the experience was unsuccessful. Together they caught one and a half times more fish. However, the third time Alex said, Sorry, Anthony, not mine. I can't sit for that long. I don't have enough patience. And they eat mosquitoes, too. I'd rather start a fire. By that time, Unfamiliar guys woke up and settled down in a nearby clearing. And when Anthony returned with the catch, Alex was sitting by the fire and plucking the strings of a guitar borrowed from the neighbors. My father always sang this song on campaigns. And now me. Did he teach you to play? No. After his death, I found his notebook with songs, chords, and promised myself that I would learn the same way as him. To never forget and to console my mother, I started taking lessons. That's how I learned. Why did you never talk about it? Keep it a secret. Alex shrugged. No. It just always seemed to me that this was an internal family matter between me and my mother. I studied for myself, and not in order to conquer the public. But you are in vain. By the way, a guy with a guitar is not only the dream of all young beauties, but also a link for a harsh male company. Okay, I'll take the guitar to the owners. Alex got up and went to give the instrument. Girls poured out of a tent in a nearby clearing and began begging for a concert, which greatly embarrassed the guitarist. Among them was a brown-haired woman with blue eyes and a short-haired blonde. I swear to you that on any day off when you say I will come to your clearing and play for you. Agreed? By the way, my name is Alex. Kate, the owner of the guitar, introduced herself. Very nice. Jasmine the blonde immediately got into the conversation. And this is Sandra. Nina and Ann. The friends smiled. Well, what about my proposal to Jasmine? Kate, agree. 
Jasmine lightly, almost boyishly, pushed her friend on the shoulder. Well, okay, she smiled. Now I'll just paint the second eye and I'll be ready. Got it. I'm waiting for you in silence. Oh, wow. Sergio was delighted when he saw the approaching Apolex accompanied by girls. My charm was only enough for the guitar. And that's not the right one, Anthony laughed. I am so far from music that I had no idea that guitars could differ in the number of strings, six or seven. For me, it's such a small thing. And there are also 12. Kate smiled. But this is already aerobatics, Kate closed Sergio's eyes. The guys met and began to court the ladies. We treated them and had a fun time together. This time Alex took his guitar. Where are you going? His mother asked, seeing how he carefully packed the instrument into a case. I promised that I would play for the guys on vacation. Okay, she smiled. Is it only me who knows that you play? No, also Anthony. Once I had a chance to play someone else's instrument in front of him. He was the one who ratted me out last time. And Sergio got a guitar there, but the wrong one. So the owner of the instrument sang for us. And I promised to sing next time. Mistress, were there any girls with you? Finally. Otherwise, it's all a harsh male company. I'm afraid to disappoint you, but the girls were not with us. Sergio just found them in a clearing and borrowed a guitar. They rested in a purely female company. And what? Is this the end of your acquaintance? What do you hope for Jasmine's continuation? Why do you answer a question with a question? And you? Here they are together, laughing. Well, happy son. Hello, friends. Definitely, Mom. Oh. Um, Alex kissed his mother and left the house. The guys sat listening to Alex play and listened to a variety of songs. This went on for a very long time. They managed to sing many rock hits and bard camp songs. When the guitarist got tired and put down the instrument, Sergio suddenly said, But I don't understand why until this time we always hung out only in men's company. Look how cool the girls were in helping our chef make the table. And when they sing along or just sit next to each other. What then? I decided to clarify Anthony. Then, not only the stomach rejoices, but also the eyes Sergio continued his tirade. Or do you disagree? From what? I agree very much. Anthony brought the finished kebabs and placed them on the table right on the skewer. But we're flying. Guys, what are you doing? Kate asked. Perhaps you study together. We're friends. We studied Alex nodded. And now between the three of us we have auto repair shops for German cars. Nobody needs to fix it. We must Jasmine suddenly nodded. I'm still planning to get to the diagnosis and can't find the time. No problem. Come to me. I'll take a look Anthony immediately told her, ahead of even Sergio. Do you girls work together? Sergio finally found where to insert the phrase. No, we studied together at the Institute of Tourism, and now we each work separately. But the student friendship remained. That's true, Alex nodded. The best friends remain from student days. What is the Institute of Tourism about? Tents, campfires, hikes? I didn't know that you had to graduate from college to do this. The girls burst out laughing. This is about organizing trips, contracts with hotels, airlines, meetings, accommodation of guests, and of course languages. Guests are different, but this was somehow connected with hiking before. But now people increasingly love the beach and all inclusive rather than carrying a backpack. Kate, do you go hiking? Alex was surprised. He could hardly imagine this fragile girl under the backpack. No, she shook her head. It's just that my dad is a hunter and we periodically go to the wilderness with him. But I usually hang around in the hut or tent while he stalks his prey. But mom doesn't. Mom died a long time ago, after his death. Dad just became interested in hunting. And I was so afraid that he would do something to himself out of grief that I was tempted to go with him every time. He couldn't refuse me, and while I was there, in the hut or tent, he couldn't allow anything to happen to him. I won't go back alone. And then we both got involved. Now, however, work doesn't always allow me to travel with him, but I try to keep him company at least once a year. After all, among us you are the only one who organizes exactly the kind of hikes that Alex asks about. On foot, bicycle, horseback. You look for instructors locally and form a group. 
but this is only for the country and I myself do not participate in them. There are cool agencies that can organize a trip to Kilimanjaro, to the mountains. Alas, I have not yet grown to such professionalism. Girls, you tell it in such a way that I just wanted to remember my childhood and also run away on vacation somewhere to climb. Have you ever walked before? Yes, I spent every summer climbing passes and peaks. And besides, I was in the Caucasus. So that's where the guitar comes from. Alex nodded. While my father was alive, he always played on hikes. Then he was gone. The hikes also gradually faded away, that's all. Hello, adult life. But it turns out that there are people who continue to conquer mountains. Kate, can you put me in some group too? On your vacation, you can even fly to the moon, Sergio laughed. But just keep in mind that I won't go with you. I'm so far from this romance. Anthony shook his head. No, it's not for me. I'm more into fishing. Morning dawn. Mosquitoes Alex picked up and laughed. I've already tried this romance, I know. You might think there are no mosquitoes on a hike the friend was offended. Eat, but you know that to each his own. I don't have the patience to sit on the shore for several hours and look at one point. I need some movement. This time the guys gathered without an overnight stay, so in the evening they began to leave. Kate, do you mind if I give you a ride? Alex asked. I really want to ask about your work. Jasmine, I'll go with Alex. Come on without me, the girl said to her friend, as you say. Then I went. Alex has been in frequent contact with Kate lately. She suggested the option of hiking along local rivers and their surroundings. The young man had never been there and happily agreed. The timing was still unclear, but Kate very professionally assembled the group and discussed with its members the necessary conditions for the trip. The young man admired her foresight and clarity of thoughtful actions. Did they teach you everything at the Institute? No, it's probably a matter of character. But we still learned something. For example, how to talk to people. We even had psychology. You were probably an excellent student. You won't believe it. I was a solid average. I had no time to study. Spring and autumn hunting with my father. So to be honest, I finished it with difficulty. Moreover, if it weren't for my father's stern look, I probably would have quit in my third year. Have you ever wanted to study further or is a car repair shop the ultimate dream? I don't know where to go next. And I only got the service because Sergio organized everything and Anthony and I were on hand. I've been working here for how many years now and I seem to know everything thoroughly. And yet, every time I come to the conclusion that it's not mine, therefore there is no desire to develop further. I thought you liked it. If you don't know what to do, you need to close your eyes and imagine the ideal place you want to be in and imagine what you are doing there. Then maybe it will become more or less clear. My dad taught me this. Maybe you can try? Okay, definitely, Alex said, and suddenly laughed unexpectedly. What are you doing? Kate smiled. I imagine that if Anthony did this, then some kind of beach would probably appear before his eyes, where he stands and cooks the fish he just caught, and so that no work interferes with his fishing. We don't know what's in our heads. Have you decided to imagine the future for a friend? It's true. It would be better to decide for yourself. Alex took his guitar with him. He sang in the evenings for the group, when everyone sat around the fire after a hard day. The hike organized by Kate, of course, was very different from those that he enjoyed as a child. The group carried a minimum of food with them, there were stops everywhere where supplies were waiting for them, and all that remained was to overcome the distance to get from point A to point B. The group was surprisingly friendly and cheerful. Everyone helped each other and even started their own tradition. Every day someone told about themselves what they do in life, why they decided to go on a hike, and how their loved ones reacted to it. Everyone talked about families at will. The eldest of the group, Charlie, turned out to be an avid hiker. At the same time, he worked as a teacher at the Institute and sometimes told interesting stories of student life that passed before his eyes. Usually at such moments Alex felt that he regretted that he never went on to study further. But even following the advice, he still could not imagine a specialty that would be interesting to him. However, after my return, I suddenly realized that meeting a law school teacher would come in handy in order to solve problems arising in business. When he called his former instructor with another question, Charlie asked him, Alex, don't you want to take training with us? As I understand it, 
This would help you solve many business-related issues. What are you doing, Charlie? And what about the work? I have absolutely no time to study. Yes, but still think about it. I don't refuse to help you, but it seems to me that it would benefit you. And you refused? Kate was surprised when he conveyed his conversation to the girl. After Alex returned from the hike, they began to communicate often. Maybe because Alex was grateful to the girl for a great vacation. Or maybe it was because every night on this vacation he dreamed of her. He understood that he had fallen in love with a girl but did not know how to say it. Therefore, I tried to communicate with her more often so as not to accidentally lose sight of her. Perhaps you can save a lot on the services of a lawyer if you yourself have a legal education. Sergio happily jumped on this idea. What are you doing? This is cool. I would go myself, but I can't. You can see for yourself that you have to constantly engage in development, and we will allocate money to you from the profits. You will oversee the entire network of workshops. I think this is a great idea. What do you think, Anthony? I'm for it, said the second friend. And then some particularly harmful client comes along and starts threatening to sue and other troubles. Now we're just trying not to aggravate things. What if he himself is to blame? If we have our own lawyer, then perhaps such cases can be avoided. Let him sue, we will still win. So five years after completing any studies, Alex again plunged into student life. Since he studied remotely, he had to appear at the Institute twice a year. During the sessions he acquired, in addition to knowledge, new acquaintances, and their network of services already had several new clients. Since most of his fellow students were representatives of law enforcement agencies, Alex hoped that he would not need to defeat them after all, and therefore was friends with them without any self-interest. Playing the guitar, Alex became friends with Freddie, who was a couple of years younger and worked as a detective. Despite their different professions, it turned out that in childhood Freddie was also fond of tourism, and perhaps they even crossed paths at some tourist gatherings, being rivals. But now they strummed their guitars together during student meetings. Once Alex invited a new friend to a barbecue in his old company. Who will be? He asked. My colleagues and friends, Sergio and Anthony, as well as our girls. The young man did not specify which ones exactly. When Alex brought Freddy to the place, there was a huge bouquet of flowers on the set table. However, only Anthony was fussing around. Where is everyone? Alex was surprised. They are late, as always. Let's get acquainted. This is my classmate, Freddy. He also plays the guitar. Hello, I'm Anthony. So we have three musicians today. Alex smiled. It turns out that way. What you play too? A new acquaintance asked Tolia. Me not. I am far from this. I'm in charge of the kitchen here. Yes, this is our main chef, Alex confirmed. And by the way, are we having a holiday? Where are the flowers from? But I wanted to talk to you about this in private, if possible. Anthony took his friend aside. When the company arrived, everyone met Freddy and sat down at the table to unanimously praise Anthony's traditional amazing kebab. He looked significantly at Alex. The young man nodded, wiped his hands, and picked up the guitar. Alex, eat. Otherwise, you won't get the barbecue. I'll have time. Now the ceremonial part begins. Which? Those present were amazed. Dear Jasmine, said the fishing enthusiast. I asked you to sing this song for me, because you know that I'm not much of a singer. Ugh, I'm already scared. The girl burst out laughing. Anthony was confused. Sorry, it was just very unexpected to hear this from Alex. I wanted to say that we haven't known each other for long but I can't imagine how our company could have managed before without your amazing voice, cunning fox eyes and Jasmine's movements, reminiscent of a fast wind. Anthony's voice trembled a little. Everyone at the table became silent. This is probably too unexpected, but I ask you to become my wife. Wow, Sergio exclaimed. That's who I didn't expect from. Everyone looked at Jasmine. Her usual carelessness and sweetness had disappeared somewhere. The girl blushed, then got up from the table and walked up to Anthony. Well, why all this? You could have asked me quietly, but now if I refuse, I will have to make excuses. I will lose good friends. Are you refusing me? Anthony asked almost in a whisper. And then the girl suddenly burst into a smile. Did I scare you well? But of course, yes, I agree. 
Everyone clapped together and began to congratulate Anthony. What, no one will congratulate me? Jasmine was indignant. Well, you actually put on such a performance here that I want to hit you and not congratulate you, said Kate. This is the only way you'll end up with a heart attack and we'll be left without a boss for a picnic. Freddy started playing one song after another. He did well, and the group began to sing along together. And while no one noticed, Alex pulled Kate out from behind the common table, and they went for a walk along the shore. Did you know? Asked the young man. What? The girl was surprised about Jasmine and Anthony. Yes, I knew about them. They have been dating for a long time. It's been over a year now. But she didn't tell me. But it wasn't my secret. Kate shrugged. I thought they were just living quietly and peacefully together and everything that happened today was a surprise for me, as it was for everyone. However, it was you who started singing the song. Yes, Anthony asked me to do this before you arrived. And I already saw a large bouquet in the vase, so I compared the facts and guessed what would happen. What does your new friend do? Freddy. He's from the police. Wow. Where I study, almost all of my fellow students have shoulder straps. He and I just have a lot of common interests, and when we got to know each other better, it turned out that we even crossed paths with him at school age on tourist slabs. They just didn't remember each other. By the way, I told him about Baikal and he became interested. He says he always dreamed of going there. So maybe you'll get another client soon. When the guys returned to the company, Jasmine immediately began asking to play Kate. None of the men, no matter how beautifully they play the guitar, sings romances better than you. Take the instrument, let's sing about your beloved. In honor of my holiday today, please. Kate took the guitar, sat comfortably on the bench, raised her eyes and quietly stroked the strings, and then everyone together, including the guys, sang this lyrical romance. Kate went with Sergio after the holiday. Alex gave Freddy a ride home. So how is it? He asked his comrade, did you regret that you went? No, everything was fine. I haven't rested like this for a long time. Thanks for the invitation. It's good with colleagues, of course, but all they talk about is work. And then there's a change of scenery. And you see, I got to the holiday. It was completely unexpected, Alex agreed. And your girls are good, calm, and cheerful. They don't hang themselves around their necks. They don't pretend to be princesses. Such their guys as they say. I would strike for Kate, but she's already taken. And Anthony, I wish my wife happiness. You can really feel the chemistry between them. Is Kate busy? Alex was surprised. Why do you think so? If it's about the fact that Sergio went to see him off, then that's not what it's about at all. Freddy looked at Apolex in surprise. Isn't she yours? My? Alas, we are only friends. Alex, forgive me, of course, I'm not an expert on human souls, but friends don't look at each other like that. Are you kidding? Or did it really never occur to you? Yes, you should look from the outside how she looks at you. I won't say anything about how you glare at her. It seems to me that you are mistaken. Yes, I like her. I think I'm even in love with her. But she treats me absolutely calmly. And yet, if anyone is mistaken, it is you. Try to take the first step. You will see for yourself. Alex really wanted Freddy's observations to be true. But every time he talked to Kate, he did not see any evidence that he himself was even the slightest bit interesting to the girl. However, before each meeting, he took a long time to tune in and figure out how to say about his feelings. He decided that this time he would definitely do everything. And then at the meeting he retreated, and not finding the courage, postponed it for another time. Sergio couldn't afford to just organize a table for a friend's wedding. He also demanded that each of those invited congratulate the newlyweds. It doesn't matter what it will be poems of our own composition or wall newspapers, but the guy should see what we thought about them when, when we were preparing for the holiday. Alex racked his brains, thinking about such a unique gift. He didn't know how to write poetry, much less dance. Repairing a car or starting a fire with one match in wet weather, yes, but for some number. Everyone already knew about playing the guitar. Unless you learn a new song. But again, it will be someone else's song, not his own. What's the point? Suddenly Kate called with the same question. Alex, what do you think about the gift? I don't know, Kate. I can't do anything, just guitar. But you are better here than I can be. So if you want to play something for them, please do so. 
I still have no thoughts. And I had, you know, what idea? What if you and I play them a medley of our favorite songs with two instruments, huh? Well, not just one, but several at once. With improvisations and transitions, what do you think? Cool. You just need to choose what they like. And then we will have to rehearse for sure. We can have it at my place. The office is free in the evening. We can meet there. And after the rehearsal, I will give you a ride home. Great. Then let me write a list of songs now, and only then you will look for chords for them. And for example, the day after tomorrow, we will meet and try to combine it somehow. However, rehearsing in the office in the evening turned out to be not a good idea. There was always someone who walked through the open door and started asking something. After two rehearsals, the guys decided that they wouldn't have time to do anything like that. Maybe then to my house, he suggested and immediately hurried to calm the girl down. Don't worry, I live with my mother. I'm not worried at all. We can do it with me too. But I'm afraid dad will not let us concentrate out of curiosity. I think mom won't interfere with us, Alex smiled. Mom, I'll come tomorrow after work with my girlfriend. We need to rehearse on the guitar. Okay, son, what kind of girl is she good? Very. And he plays the guitar great. You'll hear it yourself. What do you have? Some kind of performance. Why suddenly rehearse? Yes, I didn't tell you. Anthony Jasmine is here. So Sergio ordered all the wedding guests to prepare some kind of congratulatory number. We will rehearse it. Anthony is great. Do you know the girl? Certainly. She is Kate's friend. Name is Jasmine. Who is Kate? I'll introduce you to her tomorrow. I'll wait, Mom smiled. The next day in the evening after Kate met her mother, the guys occupied the living room and the hostess went to her room so as not to disturb the young people. She left there when Kate was already getting ready to go home. Kate, forgive me my curiosity, but where did you learn to play so well? Alex doesn't catch up with you. Thank you. The girl lowered her eyes. But unlike your son, I studied at a music school. If I had mastered it myself the way Alex did, then it's unlikely that I would have succeeded at all. I don't know if you're interested in my opinion, but I really liked it. I would be happy to receive such a gift. We are not quite ready yet. I'll probably need to practice a couple more times. Yes, Kate, that would be good. Well, come over. Next time I'll make you some tea with some goodies. Would you mind? The girl smiled. No, that is great. So, until next time. Twice after the rehearsal, Alex gave the girl a ride home and walked her to the entrance. On the third, Kate suddenly asked, Will you come in? Can I? The young man was both scared and happy. Of course, she smiled encouragingly. They went up to the apartment. Now thought Alex, it's time, the most opportune moment. But at the same time, he silently looked around the walls of the rooms on which diplomas and some of his father's hunting trophies hung. Where is dad? He asked Kate, as always on the hunt. He'll be back in three days. Interesting about you. Do you want some tea? Yes, thank you. Then sit here. The girl gently pushed him onto the sofa. I'll put the kettle on now. And she went out to the kitchen. Alex struggled with himself. He was very scared to take the first step, but at the same time he understood that he couldn't imagine a better moment. Kate entered the room, looked at him intently and suddenly asked, Tell me, don't you like me at all? This confused Alex's cards. He became embarrassed, lowered his eyes and whispered barely audibly. I like you, I like you very much. What? Sorry, I didn't hear. Kate came close to the seated guest, and then Alex gained strength and intelligence. He suddenly grabbed the girl by the hand and, pulling her towards him, sat her on his lap. I said that I really like you, he repeated clearly and looking straight into Kate's eyes. Then she put her hands on his shoulders and brought her face close to him. Then what are you waiting for? And then Alex was overcome with fever. He began to stroke his lover's hair and cover her face with kisses. She answered the young man, then slowly began to take off his shirt. Everything swam before Alex's eyes. He felt like he was about to burst with desire. And taking her hands in his, he paused the girl a little. Let's not go so fast. I want to see you. Then he began to slowly undress Kate, kissing every exposed piece of her body. 
the girl moaned and leaned back on the sofa. Then Alex tore off his clothes and pressed himself against the same naked body. They started slowly, but each time they began to spin faster and faster in the dance of love. It was so wonderful that even after completely possessing each other, they still could not close their embrace. Maybe we can go to the bed? asked Kate. It should be more convenient there. Alex picked her up and carried her into another room. When he approached the bed and put his beloved girl there, his knees were already giving out from the newly surging desire. He lay down next to her and continued to caress her body. During this night they reached the heights of bliss many times. We slept very little, each time interrupting our sleep with the delight of possessing each other. But in the morning we were full of energy and very happy. Why? But why did you wait so long? Kate asked him in the morning. I wasn't sure if you were interested in me. I was afraid to seem naive. You can't be so blind. I wanted you from the very first time we met, when you brought and returned my guitar. You were so the girl paused and then continued, so much of a man that if it weren't for the girls, I would have given myself to you there right away, in the tent, then I thought that we would definitely be together. When you came to me about the tour a year or even more, do you hear? I've been waiting for you for over a year. I already began to understand that you would never dare. I had to take everything into my own hands. Thank you, dear, for your love and for not being afraid to take the first step. I thought about this for a long time but still couldn't decide. Yes, I saw this and, frankly speaking, I was afraid that everything would pass before it even began. And I will regret this for the rest of my life. Now you won't. Now I will be happy. And thank you for that. No, for you, my love. Alex kissed the girl on the lips, and they both felt his growing desire. At the wedding, only their duet was a resounding success. After they opened their feelings, they conquered such heights in improvisation that they could not even dream of. After finishing their number, Alex and Kate looked at each other, and then kissed passionately in front of everyone. Wow, I missed everything again, Sergio said with a smile when the applause died down. Not yet. But if you disappear at work, you will definitely miss our wedding. Yes, my love. Kate's eyes sparkled with joy, and she nodded happily in response without saying a word. Everyone rushed to congratulate the couple, but Alex stopped them. Stop. Today is Anthony and Jasmine's holiday, so I send all my congratulations to them. We submitted an application. Alex shouted into the apartment, bursting home the day after Anthony's wedding and leading Kate by the hand. What great fellows. Mom admired, leaving the kitchen. Otherwise, I was already thinking about having an educational conversation with you. About what? The son was surprised. Like what? How long are you going to live like this, running from our house to another, to a place where I or her father are not at the moment? How do you know about this? Alex was surprised. Dear child, your happiness is shining on your forehead. Is it possible not to understand where you disappear every evening? So if I say that I'm at work, you still won't believe it. Mom laughed and shook her head. Only your Sergio can receive such happiness from work, but not you. So it's high time to stop leading everyone by the nose. You're still bad at it. I am very happy and congratulate you. Live happily ever after. By the way, have you thought about where you will live? Probably mine, said the girl. Mom, don't be offended, but Kate has a bigger apartment. And Dad is at home less often. Another thing, why should I be offended? Just know that in this house I will always welcome you with joy. And Mom hugged both lovers. Dad, hi. Kate said, leaving her room when her father returned from another trip. Hello, daughter. It's a pity you didn't go. Today the hunt was very successful. I shot a ton of game. Now I'll undress and show you the pictures. Whose is this? The father looked in amazement at the large men's sneakers. You are not alone? At that moment, a male silhouette appeared. Dad, meet me. This is Alex. He and I filed an application. I'm getting married. The daughter broke into a smile and looked at her father. And your hunt, I see, was even more successful. And how did you two meet? Asked the father when he joined dinner after a shower. Like everything in our lives, by chance Kate smiled. Friend Alex borrowed my instrument for him, but it didn't fit. That's all. Without details. Do you play guitar too? Bob asked the guest. Alex nodded. It's clear. 
What do you do in life? I work at a car service center. A male profession, respectable. Electrician, tinsmith, painter? Alex smiled. A bit of everything. How is that? Dad, he owns a car repair shop my daughter interjected into the conversation. Oh, that's it. A businessman, then? Well, not really, it just happened that way. Where does the music come from? It's for the soul. Father played. And when he passed away, I also decided to learn in memory of him. Are there any other hobbies besides music? Football, fishing, hunting, fishing? Absolutely not. I tried it a couple of times with a friend, but it wasn't for me. Sometimes we play football with the guys on vacation. But no, not a fan. I don't know about hunting. Never was and never will be. But whether it's worth it or not, you can only tell when you go there. But I won't insist for now. Have you known each other for a long time? Yes, for more than a year now. And what? Have you been dating for a year? And now you've just decided to get married. Aren't you pregnant? Bob looked at his daughter. Dad, we've known each other for over a year, but we've been dating for a little over a month. And immediately Jasmine is there. You won't please. A year is a lot. A month is not enough. Are you jealous or what? I'm assessing whether you made the right choice. And if it's wrong, then what will you ban? I won't think so. You will learn from your own mistakes. And when will you have your wedding? Mission mid-December. Will you invite me? Or everything, as is fashionable now, without a holiday and witnesses? We haven't discussed it yet, but even if there is no wedding, we will still definitely sit with you and Mom and celebrate this event. Okay, at least you don't refuse this. Otherwise, you need to meet your in-laws, you never know. Excuse me, I'm tired from the road, I'll go and rest. Don't be shy, feel at home. However, you are already home. Is this not how Bob imagined his return? Oh, not like that. He hoped that he and his daughter would sit together in a chair, and he would show off his trophies, and Kate would ask the right questions, the ones that only a knowledgeable person could ask. What can we take from this? Doesn't know about hunting. We haven't decided about the wedding. And what is behind his soul? Oh, if only I could check. However, he himself was well aware that if he invited his future son-in-law to hunt, then Kate would certainly get involved with them. And then the hunt would turn out to be a honeymoon, and not a test. Since they began to live separately from Bob, having bought an apartment with a mortgage, their home became a real cozy nest to which they both loved to return. For the housewarming party, the guys invited their parents, who had only met each other once at a wedding. This time, the young people felt like they were the owners of the home and were happy to show the older generation the furniture they had purchased and the beautiful view from the window. What a park. Mom gasped. Yeah, Bob confirmed. Without knowing that this is a city, I would probably rush there to hunt tomorrow. And this apartment next to the park, and the feeling of a loved one nearby, and no one else, brought something beautiful into the children's lives that they lacked in other places. They often sat together, hugging each other, and just talked about their day. So this time Alex sat down and hugged his wife by the shoulders. How so? It's already the end of summer. We plan to meet with the guys, traditional barbecue, songs, and then we need to look at Constantine. He's already six months old, and we've never seen him. Darling, go without me, I would love to, but there's nowhere to put it off. Snow will soon fall there, and we need to develop routes for the next season. Over the past year, the company Kate worked for has expanded greatly. Domestic tourism has become increasingly popular, and despite the expansion of staff and increased salaries, there has only been more work. Alex more than once suggested that his wife quit. Kate invariably refused, but he did not insist, realizing that she liked this work. Although it has become difficult lately, everything in their services was stable, and although spare parts have risen in price along with cars, the flow of customers has not dried up. Anthony and Jasmine have a son. The young parents constantly posted his photographs and videos taken in the general chat, and on August 15th everyone already agreed to meet at the traditional place. And here it is on you, Kate has a business trip. The guys will be upset. Tell them that we will come personally later and meet the baby. Okay, okay, love. In the meantime, we still have a week. 
Maybe we should also do something pleasant so that we don't regret the missed days. Alex said, pulling his wife towards him. Kate kissed her husband on the lips with feeling. My wife left on the 10th, and the next day my father-in-law called. Hello, Bob. And Kate went on a business trip. Hello. Yes, I know. I already called her, and she scolded that it was late at night, and she had to choose the time. I chose not to wake him up. How was I supposed to know that she was going to the ends of the earth? What are you doing? Here we are going to meet with friends. I received a list of products that need to be brought. I went shopping. Look, only his wife is at the door, and he's going out with his friends. Is this true, friends? Bob, these are our mutual friends. We were going to this meeting together. Her business trip is unplanned. We can't let everyone down. If you are in doubt, then come too. Here's another. And I can't. I'm unlikely to return. Where are you going? As always, go hunting. Well, yes, I might not have asked. I was just wondering, would you like to come with me for a couple of days? At least look what it is. It's already been six months since I was a relative of mine, and still I've never been on a hunt. But I said, we have a meeting. So why not miss it? No. As you want. Goodbye. Me, yeah. Bob hung up and continued getting ready. Then at some point he stopped, sat down and thought. You wanted to check him. This is the same case. Another one is unlikely to come out. Kate is wandering to the other end of the world. She won't follow us. We just need to somehow persuade him. But how? The man thought a little more and then dialed the familiar number again. Alex, hello again. What do you say if I move the start of the hunt to 16? You can sit with your friends, relax, and then spend some time with me. And then it became a bit difficult to walk alone. If there was a dog, it would be a different matter. But being alone is somehow uneasy. And then, suddenly the hunt is successful. Then it will help to carry away the prey. Bob, can I think about it? Well, think, dear, think. You chickened out or what? Then everything is immediately clear with him. Let's see. If he doesn't answer by tomorrow, then I'll tell my daughter what kind of man she chose for herself, Alex thought all night. He was very far from such a pastime. But on the other hand, it was not a stranger who asked him about it. What if something happens to him and I feel guilty? And Kate will never forgive me for this. I need to buy him a dog later. Let him go with her. Alex called his father-in-law in the morning. Bob, I agree. I'll go hunting with you. Just tell me what to take with me. Great son. You don't need anything special. Take a change of clothes. And everything else is on the farm in the hut. So you can go light. I understand you. So on the 15th we call and arrange a meeting. Great. I am waiting for a call. Alex was very surprised by this nothing needed from his own experience. He knew that anything can happen in the forest, and in his backpack there must be an emergency supply in case of such an event. It usually contains matches, dry fuel and disinfectant powder. He threw all this into the bottom of his backpack, adding a couple more chocolates to restore his strength. And at the last moment I put down a small travel mug. How far away is unknown. Do you suddenly want to drink? Bob, seeing his son-in-law's small backpack upon meeting him, chuckled with satisfaction and headed into the car along a familiar road. Near the village on the edge of the field, he left her and nodded to Alex to follow him. We are now in the forest, and it's a long walk along the familiar path about four hours. How long did it take us to get here? For three days, no more. I need to be back by Friday. There will be the last season of a series about hunting on the channel. I didn't know you were into TV series. This is not just a series, it is a documentary story about hunting. They release them seasonally. I watch them by subscription. It's clear. They walked and talked about hunting. Bob showed places and told his son-in-law about his achievements. About five years ago, I picked up four healthy boars during four hunting trips. I was happy like a child, until it was time to get out. Only then did it dawn on me that I had no idea how to get them to the car. I had to call helpers and share the spoils. And not a single hunter likes to share his prey, by the way. I guess Alex smiled. After a couple of hours, the father-in-law got tired and walked in silence, making his way with difficulty. Finally, he sighed and sat down on a fallen tree trunk. Let's sit. Are you tired, Bob? Maybe I can help with something. 
Let's put something from your backpack into mine. It will be easier for you. I'm not that old. I can handle it myself. I can't bear my own burden. When it was time to get up, he stood up, looking around. Listen, I don't recognize these places. Did we accidentally get lost? Come on, Bob, you yourself said that you know every path in these places. Well, apparently not everyone. Do you know that? Wait for me here. Okay, I'm running around the neighborhood now, I'll look. I'll find familiar landmarks and follow you. So at least leave your backpack. No, I feel better with him. And again, cartridges, spare clothes. No, I'm better off with him. Come on, rest, I'll be back soon. Bob stood up and surprisingly easily disappeared behind the tree trunks. Okay. Thought Alex, let's wait. No wonder he asked me to go with him. Apparently my memory is already failing, but nothing. He has a good instinct, he will find a path, and if he doesn't find it, he will simply go back to the people. I roughly remember the road, it's true. It's difficult to find directions when you're walking for the first time. But in the end, there is the sun, you can follow it, the young man leaned his head on the backpack and closed his eyes. After meeting with friends, then getting ready and getting up early here, in the fresh air, it makes you sleepy. If I take a nap, I'll be a little more alert, Alex thought, and almost immediately fell into oblivion. Bob walked away to the side with a brisk step. Let's see how you can live without water, food, and the internet. You thought we'd hang out for a couple of days, and then I'll find you and look at your condition. Otherwise, in the city, you are all good at fluffing your tails. What will it be like for you when you need to survive? He knew exactly where he had left his son-in-law, and had little doubt that in a couple of days he would find him there, or nearby. Having reached the hut, the man gladly threw off his backpack, put the gun next to the headboard, undressed, and went to bed on a very comfortable bunk, which he had put together himself twenty years ago. Bob, laughing, was in charge of the hut. The next day he was going to go pick up his unlucky son-in-law, who probably already realized that he was left alone without help. Nothing. Let him feel the full depth of his sex jasmine me. In the meantime, I'll prepare the gun here, weld it so that there's something to eat. I'll take it with me, otherwise he's probably hungry. The man went to the well and scooped up a bucket of water, took out a pot, poured in the cereal and poured water over it. He placed it on the stove, in which pre-prepared dry firewood crackled merrily. Bob woke up at about four in the morning. It is still dark at this time in August. He calmly made himself breakfast and coffee and waited for dawn, when the tops of the trees became visible against the backdrop of the brightest sky. The man took a backpack and a gun and went in search of his son-in-law. Traces he could read well, and he clearly remembered the place where Alex had left it. A couple of hours later he saw signs that Jasmine was approaching that same log and soon found it. Only the son-in-law was not there, and there were no signs of anyone's presence. Bob noticed the remains of a fire. Wow, there was something to light it up with he was surprised after he began to look around the places, hoping to find his son-in-law somewhere nearby. The search has not given any results. What a fool Alex's father-in-law cursed. Isn't it clear that you have to be in one place so that they can find you? Bob sighed heavily and continued his search. Sometimes it seemed to him that he had found some traces, but they led into the swamp and were then lost. No, definitely not here. Then the man decided to return to the hut and start going out radially in different directions. After all, the son-in-law could not disappear without a trace. Another day passed, but wherever Bob went, he saw a lot of animals' tracks and droppings of wild boars, cries of birds and even fresh-eaten tree trunks. This means that Alex was not there, otherwise he would have scared everyone with his presence long ago. On the sixth day, before getting ready to search, I sat down and thought deeply. What will happen if I don't find him if he completely disappeared? I didn't think he was so unfit. Still, an adult could go out to people somewhere himself. Now look for him here. And what will I tell Kate? What a fool, he deprived his daughter of her husband. You can, of course, say nothing. Gone and gone. I do not know anything. What if he told her that he was going hunting with me and to these friends on a picnic? So what? Nobody saw him with me. Yes, we got together. Yes, he refused at the last moment and went alone. He probably expected to find me and did. That's it. I came up with an excuse for myself. If I don't find it today, I have to leave here tomorrow without any trophies. It was an unsuccessful hunt, let me tell you. 
My daughter will be surprised that I don't have any loot I need to at least shoot someone. Exactly. And maybe he'll hear the shots and be found. He took the gun with him and left the hut. This time the excitement of the hunt took over, and Bob shot the bird. With the booty he returned to the hut towards evening. Alex never came. So I'm going out tomorrow. You should at least listen to what's going on in the world. For the first time ever, he turned on the old radio, which in this wilderness picked up one wave of regional radio and sat down to prepare his dinner. There was news, then advertising. Next came the announcements. The man practically did not listen to the monotonous words, when suddenly something made him raise his head and turn it louder. Attention. Missing person on August 16th. A man went missing in the forest in the coastal area. Alex. How did you find out so quickly? I didn't say anything the father-in-law was surprised. 68 years old. Bob, I went hunting. Information about his place of stay is unknown. Searches are underway. If you know anything about him, please call. I'm lost. Where have I gone? Here I sit, preparing the hunt. Have they gone crazy there, or what shocked by the news? The man looked in surprise at the boiling water on the stove. Alex woke up from the cold, opened his eyes and saw twilight. He quickly stood up and looked around. There were no traces of the father-in-law's presence. Bobby shouted into the void and listened. Silence. Not a rustle, not a crunch of branches. Then the man turned in the other direction and cupped his hands. Apparently, he had to spend the night in the forest. He carefully walked around the place where he was. It was quite dry. There was earth underfoot and moss next to the trees. Should I make a fire or not? Suddenly, he will be indignant that I scared all the animals. Well, what a hunt in the twilight. He'll shoot at me out of fear. Maybe it would be better to make a fire after all. Again, someone might find him. Alex, before it got dark, pulled out his emergency supply from his backpack. He took out one tablet of dry fuel, a box of matches and made a fire. As soon as the thin branches caught fire, he immediately went to look for larger sticks to keep the fire going. I saw chocolates in my backpack. I wanted to eat. No, I won't, he decided. I'll eat something sweet. I'll want to drink, but I won't find water in the dark. I'd better look for water tomorrow morning, and then I can have a snack. With these thoughts, Alex settled down for the night on Sukhoi. I woke up early in the morning with mosquitoes buzzing over my ear. The fire went out. There was no sign of Bob or anyone else. Alex shouted to his father-in-law a couple more times. At the sound of a human voice, a pair of sleepy birds called out, and there was silence again. The man was wondering what to do. There were two options, try to find my father-in-law, or give up and get out of the forest on my own. What will I tell Kate with horror? The thought came to his mind, no, we have to look for the old man. And water too, Alex collected his things, put a tablet for water disinfection from his backpack into his pocket and walked away, carefully watching around him. He was a tourist, not a tracker. Therefore, he knew how to behave alone in the forest, but how to track the movements of another person. No, periodically, the man called his father-in-law by name and shouted. When he came across a stream and saw the water, it seemed clean to him. Alex decided to save the pill and tried this. Tasty. Now you can have some food. He took out a chocolate bar and, chewing it slowly, sat and pondered what to do next. It took a long time to find Bob. If he managed to go far, then Alex alone cannot cope, which means he needs to call for help. The old hunter was an experienced man, and if everything was in order with his health, he could hold out in the forest for a week, or even more. Therefore, the sooner Alex asks for help, the greater the chance of finding him. He stood up and continued searching for his companion. Alex was looking for his father-in-law until half past four. I found a raspberry patch where I managed to eat a little, and then, a few meters later, some currants. But after the last deadline he set for himself, he stopped himself and decided to move in the opposite direction. He walked on a whim, skirting large gullies and jumping over springs and puddles. By six in the evening, for some reason he found himself in a swamp, although according to his calculations, there should have been a power line dot returning from the swamp to solid ground. The man stopped to think. I decided that I had made a mistake about 20 minutes ago. And looking, I went back. Then he chose a different direction and walked along it for a long time. When it began to get dark, suddenly a car horn sounded clearly in the silence. Alex listened. Once again, beep. 
and this second one allowed the satellite to determine the side in which, most likely, there were people. If initially he had planned to spend this night in the forest, now, knowing where to go, he almost ran, trying to get ahead of the night. When it got completely dark, he thought that he would still have to stop for the night. But then I saw lights ahead. They took him to a field beyond which there was a village. Alex quickly crossed the field and knocked on the first house where the windows were lit. However, even before he knocked, a dog was heard barking in the yard. The tired man was glad to see him. This means there are people, accommodation, and help. Entering the house, the first thing he said was, A man disappeared in the forest, my father-in-law. The owner looked at him suspiciously. How did you disappear? Can I have some water? I haven't drunk much for two days. Yes, please. Will you eat? Alex nodded. Already sitting at the table, he began to talk. My father-in-law invited me to hunt. He and I arrived and went into the forest. I don't know where we arrived. Outskirts of the village. The car was left in front of the field. We don't have such a village, the owner shrugged in surprise. In general, he walked to the hunting hut, and after a couple of hours we got lost. Is the hunter lost? I will not believe. He is already elderly, nearly seventy, and took me with him on purpose. He says he has become forgetful. Well? When he realized that we were lost, he said that he would go look for a path and disappeared. How did you disappear? For a long time. Yes, it's been three days since I've been walking through the forest, looking for him, screaming. To no avail, he doesn't respond. I decided to get out to people and ask for help. Where is your weapon? If a hunter? I'm not a hunter. He took me for the first time. Take a look, he says, you might like it. But he had a weapon, but I didn't. It's clear. But now it's night. No one will look for him. If a hunter has a gun, then he shouldn't go missing. But he is an elderly man. You never know what happened. Maybe he had a heart attack or twisted his leg. Let's go to bed for the night. As soon as it dawns, we'll go organize searches. There's a guest house in the yard. You should go there. The hostess saw the guest off and opened the door to a small building for him. The toilet is over there in the yard. She showed a wooden structure. Good night. What about the dog? What is the dog? She won't attack me when I go to the toilet. The dogs are guarding the gate. If you decide to run away, they won't let you in. And you can walk around the yard. Thank you. Get down. Nicholas will come for you at six o'clock. Listen, all this is somehow suspicious. Do not you think? Nicholas asked his wife, hunter without weapons. The father-in-law has disappeared. Maybe they didn't get along. Yes, I shot him and threw away the weapon. Since you yourself know that a weapon, once officially registered, cannot be thrown away. The soul will be taken out if they find out about the loss. Okay, I shot my father-in-law with the weapon and left it next to the body. It seems to me that you've seen enough detective stories. But I agree, it looks suspicious. We should report it to the police. Alex, after wandering through the forest, immediately fell into a deep sleep and woke up only when he heard the creak of the door opening. The owner was standing on the threshold. Good morning. What is your name? Alex. And you? Nicholas? Right. But let's go to the hut and begin the search. The morning turned out to be gloomy and rainy. The gray sky hung over the trees like a prediction of disaster. A police squad was waiting at Alex's house. Get ready, dear man, we'll go to find out the identity and investigate the incident. Let him eat something. The hostess stood up for the guest. We don't have time. Wrap something for him with you. Have a snack on the way. It's not that Alex wasn't expecting the police, but he still had some kind of bad taste in his mouth. He thanked the owners and went to the department. In the car, Alex was thinking about how to speed up the search process call and tell Kate about everything. What can she do 9,000 kilometers away? You will just worry. The husband decided not to upset her. Suddenly it flashed in his head, Freddy. Exactly. He could help but he didn't remember how to find his number, and his phone was dead. Ask the police to charge it. What if they don't? Sergio needs to call. Firstly, he's an excellent organizer. He can do everything himself. And secondly, he can find Freddy. Well, Hunter, do you have any documents with you? 
Alex was glad that he had grabbed the rights just in case. Yes, and put the plastic card on the table. The policeman looked at it, turned it over in his hands. And for weapons? I don't have a weapon. This father-in-law is a hunter, and he just took me for company. Good company. If you were lost, what, you didn't get along with your father-in-law? Why didn't you get along? We have a good relationship. He raised my wife alone, and we always communicated well. But oh well, I'll take this. The policeman pointed to the driver's license in his hands. It's possible Alex stuttered. What do you want? Can I call? One call. Come with me. They walked to the duty officer sitting at the entrance, and the sergeant moved the Alex telephone. All. Why? Sergio, hello. I'm not lost. Listen. Don't worry. I'm with the district police. My father-in-law and I went hunting, and he got lost. Don't interrupt, I say. In general, can you organize a search? Write it down. Bob, 68 years old, hunter. You can contact them. They know all the borrowings. They can show you where it is. And yet we never got to it. I didn't get there. That's it. Come on. Oh, no, stop. Try to find Freddy. Ask, maybe he exchanged contacts with one of our people, besides me. He would help us a lot now. That's it for now. Alex hung up, short and to the point. The sergeant approved his conversation. I still have a request, but if it's not possible, can I recharge my phone somewhere? Do I have the contacts of the right person there? He would help me a lot. You can charge it, but you just leave it here, and you and I will go back. I agree Alex nodded and handed the device to the man. What about cord? The fact of the matter is that I don't have a cord, but here is a standard connector. Maybe someone has one for you. Why am I so kind to you? Okay, we'll find it and install it. Now march back. For now, we will confirm your identity. In the middle of the day, a man came to see Alex again. Do you want to eat? We gathered here in a diner. Maybe bring something? No, thanks. The hostess gave it to me to take with her. Haven't had time to eat it yet. Okay, yes, by the way, the device is 40% enough. And excuse me, we dug into it a little out of duty. You understand? I understand Alex nodded and took the phone. Thank you. As soon as the sergeant left, he immediately called Freddy. Please take this. I really need it, the man prayed to himself. Soon the phone rang. Hello, Alex. Sorry, a little busy. Is there anything urgent right now? Hello. Sorry, Freddy, but it's very urgent. I met the police as a detainee. Talk to Sergio. He'll explain to you what's going on. Fine. I just texted his number to you. Okay. Agreed. Don't worry. Everything will be fine. Alex hung up and exhaled for the first time in a long time. From here he won't be able to do anything more, and his friends will definitely organize a search. Sergio arrived in the evening, he was brought by Freddy in a company car. While he stayed to talk with his colleagues, Alex was released. The sergeant admonished him almost friendly. I hope your relative is found. I wouldn't worry so much about my father-in-law. Well done. So the guys are now organizing a search group, and Freddy's colleagues are contacting the society, looking for Bob's note. Do you remember how he was dressed, what was he with? Alex nodded and told all the signs by which you can find a man. Great. Sergio quickly wrote down everything and sent it to someone. Starting tomorrow, announcements about his disappearance will be broadcast on radio and television. I have booked a time. Don't you have a photo of him at home? Eat. Or maybe on the phone. Alex muttered his head negatively. If we filmed, it was on Kate's phone. Clear. She still doesn't know. I hope no, otherwise she will be harassed there. I need to call her when I get home. To say that everything is fine with me. What if he asks about his father? She doesn't know that we went hunting together, so if he asks, I'll say I don't know. Kate got used to his long absences, so he won't start worrying right away. And there, you see, he will be found. Well, God forbid. When Alex got home, the first thing he did was send a photo of his father-in-law, Sergio, then I sorted out my things and cooled down in the shower for half an hour, enjoying the warmth and comfort. The body, 
unbearably itching from insect bites, gradually recovered after a shower and hot aromatic tea. Alex called his wife, it was already morning for them. Hello, Kate appeared on the screen. Our working day has already begun. I'm running to the meeting place. How are you there? You look tired. Maybe I shouldn't have worked so hard. It's actually evening here. Of course I'm tired. I'll wake up in the morning and be as cheerful as you are now. Great. Everything is fine. Then you'll tell me how you had a good time at the picnic. Again, I can't reach my father. He's probably gone hunting again. Didn't tell you anything? Alex has a lump in Kate's throat. He hated lying, but his wife didn't even look at him and continued. No, how do you know? He definitely won't share this with you. When are you coming back? Another week. Please be patient. I miss you very much too. Very, very much. Kiss you. And I love you, dear. I also hug you tightly and love you very much. The wife blew him a kiss and passed out. A week. There's still a week. Bob, I beg you, find him alive and well. Otherwise, I don't know what I'll say to your daughters. Bob walked along the familiar path to his car. He tried to walk faster, but by the end of the third hour he was already tired. Moreover, it was slippery. And who put me on the wanted list he thought on the way? Maybe they found the car in the field and decided it was missing. They searched the base and found who was the owner. And so they search. A. I should have at least told one of my people not to worry. And now what a mess. They transmit on all channels. And why, one might ask. Still okay. A helicopter flew overhead a couple of times. I wonder if you're following me too? Or was it just a coincidence? You should ask the hunters. They would quickly show the hut. Oh no, who should I ask? Still, like me now, on the hunt, it's time. Well, in the forestry, we're all over the place there. Or is it still Kate? No, she would worry about her husband and I taught her. But how am I going to make excuses for Alex in front of her? He's not a bad guy, he's both a businessman and plays the guitar. The devil pulled me to call him. Why did he agree? I might as well not go. Well, of course you could. Only I myself press that they say the old one can't cope, but Kate can't. She would have told him that it was all a bluff, but her husband accepted everything at face value. Oh, Bob, you idiot, the likes of which the world has never seen. But now I'll come and say that they're looking for the wrong thing. Let the search for Alex begin quickly, or maybe while they are looking for me, they will find him. That would be great. Then no one would have known my tricks with this thought. His right leg went somewhere to the side, and the man fell. A sharp pain pierced my leg. Here's something else that was missing. It takes a maximum of half an hour. And now we'll have to hobble Bob tried to get up. Sharp pain again. Ugh. Broke or what? So what now? Crawley threw off his backpack and crawled to the nearest fallen trunk, of which there were plenty in the forest. I felt it with my hands, made sure it was strong, and dragged it along with me. He took a hatchet out of his backpack and made something like a crutch. After swallowing a handful of painkillers, he began to tie his leg with a rope to prevent him from moving. His eyes darkened with pain, but the old hunter bravely endured. Finally, everything was ready. He stood up, leaning on a makeshift crutch, then looked at the backpack and waved his hand at it. He took the gun and went further to the people. The search group has already passed through here twice. They constantly returned to the lost person's car in order to take a new direction of search from there. This time we did not discuss reconnaissance yet, one of the search engines said. Look, someone is coming out of the forest. Everyone raised their heads and looked in that direction. Jumping awkwardly, a man came out to the outskirts of the field. The group rushed there. Seeing that the man was limping, they grabbed a stretcher. Bob, is that really possible? We all no longer knew where to look for you. What's wrong with your leg? Slipped, broke. Looks like the stretcher is here. No need, guys. Just let me lean on your shoulder. My brother-in-law disappeared there. That's who you need to look for. The son-in-law is another lost one. For a long time? Yes, it will be a week. Let's get to the car. Tell you everything in detail. All groups began to curtail the search, and doctors and police, and Sergio and Alex immediately rushed to the transmitted coordinates, and they were the first to arrive. 
Alex jumped out of the car and rushed to his father-in-law. Bob, well, you scared us. Alex, how are you here? I was looking for you. I already thought that you had disappeared. I was looking for you. And when he didn't find it, he went to people for help. We've been looking for you here for days. The hunters gave the coordinates of your location. The helicopter flew, looked, and said that there was no one. So we decided that you were lost in the forest. And I was just thinking that we should report you missing when I heard on the radio that they were searching for me. I realized that I had to go out. There is a backpack half an hour away. When I twisted my ankle, I threw it away. I can't give up my weapon, but I left it behind. Maybe you should go and have a look. No question, Bob. Now we'll send you to the hospital. We'll draw up documents with the police and go get your things. That's okay. Excuse me, said Alex's father-in-law, settling into the ambulance. For what? The son-in-law was surprised. It's good that it's over. But I have to tell you that hunting is not my thing. Yes, I already understood the old man laughed. Father told Kate. I plan to go out and apply to search for your husband. And then I heard on the radio that it turned out that I was the one who had disappeared. I was sitting there, cooking a bird, and suddenly it disappeared. It's clear that I need to show up somehow and say that everything is fine with me. I went, grabbed the shot birds, and followed the familiar path to the car. That's when he returned. And your husband is great. And he himself came out to the people and began to worry about me, the old dunce. He raised the whole region's ears. As it turned out, not in vain. Otherwise I would be walking on one leg. And then they found my backpack and dragged it. So I'm calm now. You're in good hands. And before that, weren't you sure about this? Well, there were some doubts. Bob winked at his son-in-law, who was present during his conversation. All's well that ends well, Alex answered him. Well, is it done with hunting now? What are you talking about? I'll just get you on your feet right away. Why did I think so? Kate laughed. We decided to give you a gift, a small walkie-talkie, so that if something happens, you can signal to us about your troubles. The daughter handed him the box. Will you take it away yourself, or will you need help? Bob was in charge of the stove in the hut. Oh, guys, how good it is. And it's also calm with you. It's a pity that you don't share my passion. Dad, the main thing is that Alex and I have our own, maybe not so harsh and courageous, but still sometimes absolutely necessary. Alex smiled at his wife, took out a guitar from his things, and, striking a chord, began to sing quietly. Everything is ghostly in this raging world. Colleagues, initially skeptical of her educational credentials, over time began to respect her and her superiors appreciate. Selena got a job in the firm where Buck worked, translator. But from what she told me, she did little translate. She mostly flirted with male colleagues and seduced her husband. Buck, on the other hand, loved his wife and indulged her in everything. Citing her busy schedule, Jenny tried to see her friends as little as possible. It was too painful to see the man she loved feeling the same way she did, but for another woman. But it hurt even more to see Buck genuinely consider her a friend. But no matter how hard Jenny tried to avoid seeing her friends, three times a year she had to be in their company. On New Year's Eve and on the couple's birthdays. Hi, Happy New Year. Selena chirped, taking the box of presents from Jenny's hands. Buck was helping her take off her coat. Come on in. You look beautiful. Thank you, you look great too. So we've exchanged compliments, now come on, I'll introduce you to the guests. Selena dragged her friend into the large living room where several people were already there. You didn't tell me you were having guests, Jenny whispered anxiously to her friend. We decided that we had already spent enough time together and in order not to bore each other, we decided to diversify our society with other people. And you must be tired of spending the holiday with just me and Buck, Selena whispered back and smiled broadly at the two men they were approaching at the same time. Jenny, let me introduce you to my and Buck's co-workers John and Jacob. Men, please love and welcome my best friend Jenny. A pleasure. Each of the men gallantly kissed Jenny's hand. Selena then introduced her friend to the married couple Steve and Julian. They vacationed in Italy together. She whispered to Jenny and her work friend Diane. Finished with the greetings, Selena looked at Buck. He understood her look and spoke loudly. Well, now that we're all here, why don't we go to the table? 
The attendees responded in agreement and reached for the lavishly set table standing here in the living room. Jenny's seat was between John and Jacob. Behind Jacob sat Selena, followed by Buck, Julianne, Steve and Diane. Jenny thought for a moment that Diana was not happy with this seating arrangement, but she immediately put it out of her mind and concentrated on her behavior. John was an excellent conversationalist and an attentive gentleman. He tried to pay attention to both Jenny and Diana. Buck was discussing something with the couple, but Selima and Jacob. Jenny didn't notice it right away, but she thought her friend was leaning too close to him. Jacob's gaze didn't match that of her friend and co-worker either. It was as if he were caressing and undressing Selena with that gaze, and she was responding promisingly with her eyes. Jenny shook her head. No way. Her friend is not like that. Yes, she is a windy, reckless flirt, but she loves her husband and is faithful to him. After a moment, Jenny thought she was imagining it and joined in the conversation with John and Diana. She looked angry and desperate. What's wrong with you tonight? Jenny said to herself. You've been seeing things all night. She looked down at her glass. No, it wasn't empty. She had only sipped a small amount the entire time she had been at the table. Her musings were interrupted by Buck's loud voice. All right, ladies and gentlemen. In a couple of minutes, the chimes will strike. Please ask the men here to fill our ladies' glasses. The table became animated. We heard the popping of champagne and the clinking of glasses. With the last chime, everyone clinked glasses, drained their glasses and began to congratulate each other. Jenny saw Buck and Selena kissing. The spouses, Steve and Julianne, also hugged. Diane received kisses on the cheeks from all the men present. Then it was Jenny's turn. Happy New Year. She was hugged in turn by John, Jacob, and Steve. All the employees of the travel agency, following the example of the head, tried to be punctual and concise. Okay, Jenny. I think you know that our business in Indonesia is not as good as we would like it to be. Jenny nodded quickly. It's a sought-after destination, and we've been sending tourists there for a long time, but there are still some problems. I think it's because of the remote control, Michael Jenny suggested. You see, the chief raised his index finger. That's why I've decided we should open an office there, a branch office. Well, that's a good idea. You're putting me in charge of that. Yes. Good, good. I'll send a team of specialists. I'll have them find staff, office space, set up communications. No, no, no. I'm afraid we can't make a difference with local staff. They need a manager from us. Permanently, not temporarily. Well, I think some of the staff will agree to move to Bali, for example. Jimmy, I met you. The chief looked at the girl affectionately. Me? But why? You are a very good specialist. You have an excellent knowledge of languages. And as a manager, you have proven yourself. And on top of that, you don't have a family. After all, sending a whole family to live in another country is problematic. But you're perfect. But Michael, Jenny didn't feel good about having things decided for her. So what if she's not married? She has parents after all. Friends, acquaintances. Why should she give up everything for the company? Jenny, wait, don't jump to conclusions. Michael raised his hand soothingly. I'll give you a month to think about it. Think about it, weigh everything and agree. In turn, I promise you a significant increase in salary, a small chalet on the ocean at the expense of the company and your own car. The management of the branch will be entirely at your discretion. The only thing I will expect from you is to eliminate problems and increase profits. Michael smiled paternally. I need to think and consult with my family. I'm not completely alone after all. Of course, of course, Jeannie. You've got a whole month. And I'm not promising anything. I'm not even sure I'll do it. A month, Jenny. What a day. Jenny sat in her office, staring blankly out the window. First Buck with an ambiguous request for me. Then Michael. Why? Should I drop everything and run away to Indonesia? Let them work it out without me. I'll just keep myself busy so I don't have to think. But the thought that she might never see Buck began tore her heart into many pieces and made her want to howl. Okay, I'm going to put Indonesia on hold for a couple days and get on with my current problems, Jenny decided. I have to talk to Selena, if only to convince myself that I can't do anything to help Buck. We'll talk to her about my possible departure. With that conclusion in mind, Jenny picked up the phone and dialed her parents' number. She needed to calm down and hear an independent and appropriate opinion. Having left work early, Michael, hoping for her consent, seemed ready to fulfill her every wish. 
In a couple of hours, Jenny was already at her parents' house. Well, why, daughter? Father sipped his legitimate after-dinner glass and looked good-naturedly at his daughter. I think it's not a bad rise in career. And it's not even about the material benefits. You have complete freedom of action, and that's worth a lot. You will be your own boss, and you will only report directly to the management, and even then, as I understand it, if you worsen the indicators, and I'm sure you'll only improve them. Dad, but it's so far away, and for a long time, we won't see each other at all. We don't see each other much anyway, and we'll be visiting you on vacation, and we'll be able to video chat. I assure you, we'll see each other a lot more often than if we lived in the same city. Jenny sighed. Maybe her father was right. But what about Selena and Buck? The girl stayed the night at her parents' house. Before she went to bed, Jenny's mom came into the room. Jenny, I know there's something else eating at you. She stroked her daughter's head. Why don't you share it? I'm sure it's one of the obstacles to you leaving. Perhaps I can help to clear your doubts. The girl looked at her mother and taking a deep breath, began her story. When Jenny entered the cafe, Selena was already there. A man stood up from the table where her friend was sitting and hurried to the bar. Are they coming over? She asked, winking at Jenny. Ah, Selena waved her hand. That's Frank, my new acquaintance. Jenny felt uneasy. You mean a new lover? What about Jacob? What about Buck? Jeannie, you're becoming a prude. Get yourself a man and don't think at the sight of my boyfriends. I'm not fainting. In fact, I'm not surprised that you have several lovers. But don't you think it's unfair to Buck? How do you get into bed with him after them? Jeannie, he who knows less sleeps better. Or, what are you trying to say? Selena squinted her perfectly painted eyes. You want to tell Buck? Well, go ahead. Go. You think he'll believe you? Even if he did, he'd still forgive me. He loves me. I wasn't going to tell your husband anything. It's just that he happens to be my friend, and I'm ashamed to look him in the eye. Why are you ashamed? You're not his wife. Just because I'm covering for you, I'm betraying him. Oh, you're so tender. Jenny, forget it. This is my problem. Let's change the subject. What did you want to talk to me about? Jenny remained silent, realizing that it was useless to talk to Selena about her family. Is that what you wanted to talk about? Selena guessed. No, but what I wanted to talk about is no longer relevant. Good. Come on, I'll introduce you to Frank. And without waiting for her friend's answer, Selena waved her hands, urging the man behind the counter to come to their table. Frank, she cooed, this is my best friend Jenny. Jeannie, this is Frank. Nice to meet you. Frank leaned gallantly into Jeannie's hand. Likewise, the girl muttered and hurriedly pulled her hand away. Frank, not paying attention to the behavior of her friend, continued Selena, you do not have a friend like you. Because my friend is stuck at work, does not go anywhere and it became boring as hell. We'll find one. The man said, unashamedly eyeing Jenny with an appraising look. Good, then why don't you and your friend take us out tonight? Selena sang out, smiling at Frank. That's a great idea. Jenny, a favor, tell Buck that you and I decided to have a girls' night out and went to the movies. I'm sorry, Selena, but I have other plans for tonight, Jenny said angrily. Her friend had decided that she could decide for her who to go with and where to go. And she's making her lie and defend her. No way. Hey, what are you doing? Selena looked at her friend in surprise. What's gotten into you? Then she got up from her chair and shook her head to the side. Come on, let's go have a private chat. Jenny followed her. What are you doing, friend? Are you trying to meddle in my private life again? Selena's voice was threatening. I think you're trying to invade my privacy. Jenny retorted. I didn't ask you to introduce me to an elderly womanizer and decide for me where to go tonight. You're not going to be of any use to anyone like that anytime soon. Jenny suddenly didn't care at all. She suddenly realized that she and Selena had been different people for a long time and that they were not meant to be together. I'm going, Selena. Jenny said tiredly and headed for the exit. Get out of here. She's playing the innocent sheep. I'll live without you somehow. Hi. After such a messy fight with Selena, Jenny wasn't surprised, but Buck showing up at her apartment was a surprise. Hi. Come on in. Jenny let the man into the hallway. Something wrong? A lot of things. Buck threw off his shoes and jacket and went into the kitchen. Jenny put the kettle on and looked at the man questioningly. 
I just found out today that you and Selena had a fight. Was it because I asked you to? No, in the last two weeks Jenny had already come to terms with the fact that she no longer had any friends. You know, she quit her job because she was bored in the office. She took a job at a nightclub as a receptionist. Now she disappears there all night. I'm glad she found a job she likes, Jeannie said quietly. Why is Buck here? We hardly ever see each other. She's been asking me to come, but I haven't really liked all those noisy parties lately. Still, it's hard to stay home alone. So, I thought I'd come see you. Do you mind? No, if I'm disturbing you, I'll leave. No, you're not disturbing me, Jenny said quietly. They walked through the park. Jenny was still hesitant to tell Buck about the job offer. She was afraid of his reaction and wanted his opinion. Today Michael reminded her that she had a week to think about it, and exactly one week had passed since the night Buck had shown up on her doorstep. That night they had talked a lot, and the man had left well past midnight. She hadn't dared to tell him why she and Selena had quarreled, though Buck had urged her to do so. The next day Buck called her and asked her to have dinner with him. I'm not such a lover of company and entertainment, you laughed sadly into the phone, but I don't want to spend the evening alone. Jenny agreed. They had a wonderful time having dinner in a quiet, cozy restaurant, and then walked through the park. Buck talked about his work, about funny things that had happened to him and his co-workers. Jenny listened and smiled. She was happy just to be near him, that she could hear his voice and sometimes touch its hand. They began to meet every day. They went to the movies, to cafes, walked in the park, and even visited the theater once. From time to time Buck took her hand and and those were the happiest moments. She realized she was doing the wrong thing. That Buck was a married man and the husband of her, albeit former friend, but she couldn't help herself. Yesterday he walked her to her apartment and took her hands in his. They stood there in silence for a few seconds, looking into each other's eyes. Then Buck suddenly put his arms around her quickly and pressed his lips to purse. From surprise, Jenny first responded to his kiss, then pushed him away and ran into the apartment locked herself in and leaned back against the door. She could feel him still standing outside the door and tried not to breathe. It seemed like an eternity before footsteps were heard outside the door. Today Buck called her as if nothing had happened and asked her to meet him. At first she wanted to refuse, but then she changed her mind. What would it do? Doubt and reticence? No, better to dot all the I's and T's. They walked in silence down the alley. Each of them was thinking how to start a conversation. They started together. Yeah. Jenny didn't get a chance to say anything. I know she's cheating on me. His words hit her like a thundercloud. How? The girl whispered. So I was right. You knew everything. Buck's voice was not a drop of anger and irritation. Don't think. I'm not angry. You were best friends and even when you quarreled, you kept quiet. I see. How long have you known? Almost as soon as it happened the first time. Of course she didn't tell me anything but Selena couldn't hide her behavior, flirting without embarrassing me. At first I couldn't believe such a blatant betrayal, but her frequent walks with you convinced me I was right. Were you, were you following us? No, I just know you so well. You can't go to that many parties. She wasn't hiding from anyone. And people, unlike cheating spouses, see and hear everything. When Selena dumped Jacob, he came straight to me and insinuated that she was unfaithful. Buck, I think your spouse is cheating on you, he said. Did she leave you? I asked him. You should have seen the look in his eyes. By then, I was already aware of Selena's affairs. But why did you? Why? Jenny stopped and turned to the man. Asked you to talk to her? About the family? Yes. I'm sorry. Even though I knew you well, I didn't know you well enough. I thought you were either going to defend her and convince me that it was my fault she didn't want to settle down, or you were going to turn her in like a best friend to impress me and open my eyes. You've got an opinion about best friends, Jenny exclaimed. Sorry, other people's advice and opinions missled me. But Jenny was so offended by his words that she turned away and walked forward down the alley. Jenny, wait. Buck caught up with her and took her by the arm, forcing her to stop. I'm so sorry. I was a fool to think of you that way. It's just, a while ago I realized I didn't want a wife like Selena. I've been watching you and wishing I'd seen you in time. Although that night when you defended your diplomas there was a doubt in me when I saw you, but the decision was already made at that point, and I decided not to go with my fleeting premonitions. 
Then we didn't see each other much, and I started to think I'd done the right thing until I found out about the affair. Buck. Wait, let me finish. When I came to you and asked you to talk to Selena about our marriage, I had another goal in mind, to find out how you felt about me. And if you'd given Selena away, I would have filed for divorce and courted you without a doubt. And what did you find out? Jenny asked with an irritated grin that you were completely indifferent to me. And you've decided to stay with Selena. No, we're getting a divorce at the moment. What do you mean? The news came out of the blue. I can't live with a woman who betrayed me. Especially a woman I've fallen out of love with. I, what about Selena? Jenny was literally burning with curiosity. First she didn't believe me when I told her I filed for divorce. Then she accused you of writing her out. Then she said she wouldn't give me a divorce. Now she seems to have calmed down. Why didn't you say anything to me? To be honest, I wanted to tell you. But after the divorce. But I couldn't bear it. I wanted to see you so badly. You make me feel like I'm doing the right thing. Buck took a step toward Jeannie. What's that supposed to mean? She recoiled. Let me just see you. I'll wait as long as you'll let me. And I'll accept whatever you decide. Not believing what she was hearing. Jenny stood staring at Buck with rounded eyes. She berated herself for her gullibility and pliability, but she couldn't help it. For too long she had been around him and not been able to even touch him. Too long had she watched someone else's happiness. It was all too much. The day Buck told her he was getting a divorce and how he felt about her, she just ran away. She couldn't believe this was happening to her. That the man she'd secretly loved for so many years was reciprocating. She felt like she was dreaming. So when she got to the house, she locked herself in and tried to wake up. Half an hour later, the doorbell rang. Jenny sat there without moving. The bell rang again. On stiff legs, the girl went to the door and looked through the peephole. Buck. Why had he come? Why was he torturing her? But her hands were already unlocking the locks. As soon as the door opened, Jenny found herself in the man's arms. His passionate, demanding kisses robbed her of the strength to resist or think at all. They woke up when it was deep night outside the window. Jenny rushed to the bathroom, where she stood under the shower for a long time, trying to come to her senses and decide what to do next. Jenny, is everything all right in there? Buck's excited voice sounded outside the door. Open up please, I'm worried. Jenny wrapped herself in towels and opened the door, carefully avoiding looking the man in the eye. But he embraced her and led her into the room, where a small table had already been set up with a bottle of champagne at the head of it. At the surprised look of the girl, he explained, delivery from restaurants is available 24 hours a day. Then, seating Jenny on the couch, he poured them each a glass. To you. He raised his glass. Jenny nodded and drank it down. A warmth spread through her body and the tension began to subside. Jenny, I'm sorry. For what? If I had known you had never been with anyone before me, I would have been more careful. Good thing you didn't, Jenny grinned and held out her glass to him. Their gazes met, his happy and excitedly surprised and her sad and thoughtful. Jenny, I feel like something's wrong. What's wrong, anyway? Did I hurt you? Did I hurt you? No, you didn't hurt me. I hurt myself. But how? I let my feelings get in the way. I couldn't control myself and I let it all happen. You're still a married man. I understand you and Selena are going through a rough patch and you need an outlet. I don't blame you. I'm the stupid fool who couldn't stop you. And myself. What are you talking about? I'm divorcing Selena because she betrayed me and because I don't love her. I want to be with you. I'm the fool because I realized too late that I need you. I'll be free in a week and we'll get married. Or, ah. Uh, do you regret it? I've got it all wrong. You're with me out of pity. No, Buck. I've loved you for a long time, but. Then there's no buts about it. He's got her in his arms. We're gonna get married and be together. I love you, and I'm not gonna let some cockroach in your pretty little head get in the way of that. The last week of the month she had been given to think about it was coming to an end. Jenny was preparing a speech for Michael. She had to convince him to send someone else to Indonesia so that it would not affect her career. She was sure that she would be able to come to an agreement with the chief, that she would be more useful with him. The sudden happiness and Buck's love gave her strength. Of course, the thought of leaving with her lover crept into her mind, but she wasn't sure he'd agree. Here he had a job he loved, 
a good position, and what was waiting for him in Indonesia. I doubt his engineering skills would be of much use there. And he couldn't, she was sure of it, be unemployed for long. And after a while he blamed her for leaving him without his favorite job. No, she'd rather be fired. She could always get a part-time job translating. At least she could get a job at Buck's firm. He said their translators were worth their weight in gold. Or maybe she could quit the travel agency and move closer to her lover. Then they'd practically never be apart. This thought inspired Jenny, and she was no longer dreading the upcoming conversation with the chief. On day X, Jenny stood under the shower and sang. Buck was making breakfast in the kitchen. The feeling of boundless happiness suddenly made her want to be a little late for work. Without turning off the shower to surprise Buck, she threw on a towel and tiptoed out of the bathroom and into the kitchen. A man was talking angrily on the phone with someone. Jenny stopped so as not to distract him, let him finish his conversation and then she would help him improve his mood. So what, that you're pregnant? Jenny turned cold. We're getting a divorce and I don't care about your situation. Jenny quietly turned around and ran to the bathroom. Closing the doors behind her, she leaned against them and cried silently. Not only was she infatuated with a married man, but he was about to be a father, and from what she had heard, not a very good one. He doesn't care about his child, and the mother of his child. No, Jenny believed Buck loved her. A man can't be like that if he doesn't love, but that love leaves two people unhappy, one of whom is an innocent baby. No way, she's not gonna let that baby grow up without a father. It's their own fault for letting their feelings get out too quickly. It was time to hide them deep inside again and never show them again. Calmly, Ginny walked out of the bathroom. Buck was thoughtful, but he put her breakfast down and poured her coffee. Ginny, I have to go somewhere after work, can you get home alone? Yes, of course. Ginny tried to look nonchalant. Did something happen? Just a little misunderstanding. Wow, turns out the baby's a little misunderstanding. Jenny suddenly felt uncomfortable. Trying to hide her squeamishness at such words, she stood up from the table. I'll drive myself to work, too, okay? All right. She gave Buck a quick kiss and ran out into the hallway. Hurry, hurry, he's gonna find out about this. Michael, may I? Come on in, Jeannie. The cheek smiled. Are you here to tell me your decision? Yes, I'm taking off today. Jeannie stretched out in the wicker chair. A warm, soothing breeze was blowing in from the ocean, as if whispering. You did the right thing, it had been a little over a year since her escape. In that time she had almost calmed down, and the memories of Buck were no longer so painful in her heart. She was sure she had done the right thing. Too quickly she had given in to her feelings without letting Buck's family be dealt with. She didn't regret what had happened. She had been happy, albeit briefly but those memories would warm her for the rest of her life. She had learned what it was to love and be loved. Too hasty. Well, what's done is done. She knew she had done the right thing by moving away from her love and giving Buck the opportunity to be a good father. The birth of a child was to reunite the family of her former friend Selena and the man she loved. Perhaps, after becoming a mother, Selena would settle down and become the good and loving wife that Buck had dreamed of. Michael was not deceived. She was given a rent-free home of her own choosing, a small but cozy chalet overlooking the ocean, and a small car for trips around the island. The first months of hard work left no room for unhappy thoughts. Jenny hardly slept at all while working on the opening of the branch. She got to know the representatives of their travel agency personally, accompanying them in their work and observing them. She traveled to all the hotels with which they had contracts, talked to tourists, during which she found out that some of the representatives of the travel agency were unscrupulous in their duties and overcharged them, contrary to the terms and conditions. She found suitable premises and rented them. I thoroughly reviewed the personnel files and personally talked to each of them. A month later, the staff of the branch was renewed, trained and began to fulfill their duties. At first there were some shortcomings here and there that had not been noticed before. Jenny fixed them, corrected them and moved on. After eight months, the branch brought in the expected profit for the first time. The system was working like a well-oiled machine, bringing her satisfaction and pride, and her bosses increasing profits. She could exhale, but not relax. Jenny knew that if she let her guard down, her subordinates would feel it, and she would have to start all over again. Still, she felt better. That's when her memories came back to her. And if during the day she was so absorbed in her work 
that she thought of nothing but her work, and night her memory brought her back to the days when she had been so happy. In order not to return to the state of despair in which she had been when she came to the island, Jenny made a vow to herself that she would think of but only one hour before going to bed, and only of the good things between them. Mistress Jenny, there's someone here to see you. Kahaya, the la pair, entered the living room. Kahaya was an Indian woman, born into a poor, if not impoverished family. She and her husband had moved to Indonesia in search of a better life. But even here, things didn't work out. The couple could barely make ends meet with casual labor. Kahaya went to offices, offering her services as a cleaner and laundress. Her husband, Surya, was working on the plantations for a pittance from morning till night. The day Kahaya entered Jenny's newly opened office was the happiest day of her life. The young foreigner not only gave her a job in the office, but after watching the woman carefully and gladly fulfill all her wishes, she offered her a permanent job in her home. After learning that the assistant's husband was working his ass off on the plantations, Jenny invited him to her house and offered him a job as a driver on a tourist bus. The previous driver had been leaking fuel, so Jenny fired him. Surya gladly accepted. They settled near the shawl of their new mistress and began each morning by praying for her health. Jenny was pleased with her new employees. The only thing they could not fulfill was calling her by her first and middle names. After much study and agony, they settled on Mrs. Guinea. Soon all the subordinates began to call Jenny by that name. After a little thought she gave in. Bunter must have decided to work on his day off, thought Jenny and got up from her chair to greet her deputy. She liked Gunter at once for his efficiency, diligence, education and business acumen. He helped her understand the mentality of the natives, translated words from the dialect she did not understand, pointed out flaws she did not notice and was devoted to her with all his heart. And it was not surprising. A boy from a poor family, no matter how miraculously he managed to get an education, would never occupy such a position with his richer countrymen. By all means Gunter tried to convince his boss that she had not entrusted him with such a position for nothing. She could wake him up at any time of the day or night, and he was happy to go to the other side of the island to fulfill her errands. If one of the workers did not come to work, he was ready to replace him, while finding out the reason for the absence. Gunter dealt with insolent workers in such a way that they became quieter than water, lower than grass. Under his watchful eye, the accounting of the branch was so transparent that even Jenny, who was not very close to it, could understand all the calculations and amounts. Jenny smiled broadly and looked at the person who had entered. You. The smile slid off her pale face. Kahaya, seeing the condition of her mistress, asked excitedly. Mrs. Jenny, should I call the police? I'll call my husband right now. Don't do that, Kahaya. Jenny squeezed out. This is my friend. It's just that he came uninvited. Get us some coffee. Kahaya, glancing warily at the guest, left. Jenny stared silently at the man standing across from her, unable to utter another word. It was as if these months had never happened. It was as if that hopeless pain had never gone away. She went back to the day she'd heard him on the phone. Her heart was torn apart with despair again. Well, hello, Jenny. Buck broke the long silence. Hello, Buck. We better part ways. He reread the note again and again and could not understand a word of it. Break up with whom? Why? Why would it be better? The meeting with Selena had driven in white hot. He rushed to Jenny's room to hug her and calm down. He couldn't wait to forget this conversation like a bad dream and be glad that he was finally rid of the traitor. Selena was waiting for him at her club. It had been two months since they'd seen each other. But she changed a lot. If before she was a beautiful coquette, now she had turned into a vulgarly dressed woman with provocatively bright makeup and a lustful look. Hi, Buck. She sang out and tried to kiss him, but Buck pulled away. Selena wasn't embarrassed, and she patted the seat next to her and asked, Would you like a drink? No, thanks. What did you want? Did I want? No, honey, you wanted it. Buck stared at her in silence, and Selena continued, You wanted a real family. You're gonna get one now. Not with you. With who? I'm still your wife. We'll be divorced next week. I don't think so. A judge won't deprive a pregnant woman of her husband. Selena smiled charmingly and flapped her heavily painted eyelashes. I didn't get you pregnant, and I can safely prove it by sending you for tests. Come on, Buck. Who cares who got me pregnant? The important thing is that we have a complete real family. After all, 
The father is not the one who gave birth, but the one who raised it. I'm sure you'll be a wonderful father. Buck was starting to boil. Selena, apparently, was firmly convinced that he would gladly accept her child and raise it. You've got some nerve. Selena, I'm divorcing you. I don't want your child. Let him be raised by his father. Go to him. His father is a married man, and he doesn't need children on the side. But he does need mistresses. Come on, Buck. That's it, Selena. That's enough. I'm not going to live with a cunt and raise her bastard children. If you don't give me a divorce, I'll have to demand a DNA test, and then all your friends and family will know what a bitch you are. Although, I wouldn't be surprised if they already know. You know, hide your affairs. No one was home. Turning on the light in the hallway, Buck noticed a note on the dresser. We better break up. Without undressing, he went into the room, sat down on the couch, and stared at the piece of paper. Why? What had happened? Had Jenny suddenly realized she didn't love him? Had it all been temporary and she cooled off so quickly? He dialed her number over and over again, but the caller was unavailable. Buck jumped up and stormed out of the apartment. An hour later, he was ringing the doorbell at Jenny's parents' house. I wondered myself why everything was in such a hurry. Jenny's mom was hustling around Buck, pouring him tea, slicing cake. She called from work and said she was leaving in a couple hours. That she'd explain everything later. Didn't you know she'd been offered a job in Indonesia? No. She didn't tell me anything. Do you know where exactly she's going? How could I? Even her superiors don't know. She said she was given the right to choose any location and she'll decide where to stay. Don't worry, I'll let you know as soon as I find out. But why didn't she tell me? The woman just shrugged her shoulders. The next day Buck was in the office where Jeannie worked. Alas, young man, we haven't heard from her yet. Michael waved his hands. You'll come back in a month. We'll know her exact location then. What month? Buck paced around his office and didn't know what to do. He called Jeannie's mother. She still didn't know anything. Calm down, Buck. It's not gonna do any good to go on rushing around like this. Just be patient. I'll call you as soon as I know something. The man hung up the phone and thought, what's the real reason he's floundering? If she didn't want to be with him, why bother her? He jumped up again and ran around the office. But why run off like that without saying a word, without talking, without explaining himself? He would have understood. No. He wouldn't have understood. He wouldn't have left her until she came back to him. Maybe that's why she left without saying anything. Was she afraid of his reaction? Buck had calmed down by evening. First, he would deal with Selena, then he would look for Jenny. To Buck's amazement and indignation, Selena said in court that she was expecting a child and didn't want to leave it fatherless. When Buck demanded a DNA test, she said it would be dangerous for the baby and she would not allow it. The court sided with Selena and postponed the divorce hearing until the birth of the child. In the evening of the same day, Selena arrived at Buck's home, saying that she had quit her job and would be preparing for the upcoming birth, and now he was obliged to support her. Barely restraining himself from dragging her out the door by the scruff of her neck, Buck gritted his teeth. All right, Liv, I'll provide you with food and necessary medicines, if the doctor prescribes them, but you won't get a dime of money from me. You'll be out of here like a cork. Selena stretched her lips in a smile. She knew how to make a man fall in love and pay, but the smile began to slip from her face when she saw Buck packing. Where are you going? I'm staying with friends. You didn't think I'd want to share an apartment with you, did you? You're just afraid you can't stand me. Selena shrieked. Buck just shook his head and walked out the door. Selena decided she could do just fine without Buck. After all, she's a beautiful woman with an instant attraction for men. Hello, Kitty. How about we get together tonight? Sorry, I'm busy. Pookie, your baby misses you. I hear you're pregnant. I'm sorry, but I have no desire to date women who are pregnant. What's wrong with that? Short beefs. We want to see our daddy. Selena, I told you I don't want this baby. I have a wife to procreate with. In fact, don't call me again. Baby, who are you? Are you crazy? I'm Selena. I met you last weekend at the club. Oh, is she the one who's pregnant and about to hang someone else's baby on her husband? Sorry, I begged. It's nothing personal, but I prefer younger girls. And you're like this. Drunken mistake. Bye. 
Selena hung up the phone and stared at it dumbfounded. What does all this mean? Is she asleep? She had just been sent away by all her lovers. How could this even happen? She picked up the phone again to make the call. Oh, Selena, hi. We're having such a party. Come on over. Oh, thank God. At least she's still welcome somewhere. Selena hurriedly started packing. Yeah. Who knew a fun, agile girl could grow up to be such a badass? Betty carefully refilled Buck's tea. Have you heard from Jeannie? Buck didn't care about his wife. He was sitting at Vasilisi's parents' house. After he left home, Buck first headed for the hotel, not wanting to embarrass his friends with his presence. At the door of the inn, he suddenly met Betty, Jenny's mom. What are you doing here, Buck? The woman was surprised. What are you doing here? Buck answered rudely with a question. I was visiting a friend and decided to take a walk, ignoring the man's tone of voice to Betty. I'm moving. To a hotel. The woman looked at the young man in surprise. Blurred eyes, gaunt, tired look. Come on, let's go and have some coffee. She took him under her arm and dragged him to the nearest cafe. Buck didn't resist. Ordering a cup of coffee, Betty ordered. Tell me. Whether it was the tension of the last few days or the despair of being separated from Guinea, but Buck laid it all out. About his broken family life, about Selena's cheating, about his love for Jenny, about his too long thinking, which led to his beloved's escape in pregnancy by another wife who wouldn't give him a divorce. Betty listened to him almost without interrupting, only occasionally asking clarifying questions about his confusing story. Buck, forget the hotel. Go to Jeannie's, her apartment's empty anyway. Buck refused at first, but then decided it would be better. From that day on, he went to visit Jeannie's parents, hoping that the girl would someday reveal her whereabouts. She called the other day, but I couldn't find out where she was, and she wouldn't mention you. Buck sighed heavily. If it hadn't been for this situation with Selena's pregnancy, he wouldn't have hesitated to go looking for Jeannie. He would have traveled all over Indonesia to find her. That wouldn't be necessary. It's just a matter of finding out the location of the branch and the address of the manager. I think she somehow found out about Selena's pregnancy and decided to give your family a chance, Betty suggested. What chance? I didn't get Selena pregnant. She and I didn't sleep together for months before I started dating Denny. I'd sooner believe Jeannie was pregnant. Oh, don't worry about it. It'll work out. I'd assure you, Jeannie loved you and will understand. But you have to deal with your own problems first. You don't start a new relationship before you finish the old one. Once you've cleared the eyes with Selena, then go to Jeannie for a new life. I'm afraid Selena will do anything to keep me as her husband. Well, you better figure out a way to make sure that doesn't happen. Who's the big fat one? Selena struggled to get her eyes open and looked at the man who had spoken. A huge, chubby man of indeterminate age with a huge red nose on a puffy face was looting over her. He smelled so foul that the woman immediately felt nauseous. Pushing the man away, Selena rushed in search of the bathroom. She found it with difficulty and stood over the sink for a long time. When the seizure passed, she looked in the mirror. Disheveled hair, smudged mascara, no clothes. She was what? With this, Selena leaned against the sink again. Wrapping herself in a towel, the woman stepped out of the bathroom and looked around. Quite a decent apartment, just not cleaned. The man was wearing only shorts. A huge hairy pot belly protruded no worse than Selena's own. Here, drink up. The man handed her a glass with some liquid in it. It'll make you feel better. Selena grimaced and looked for water. How did she end up here? As if answering her sign of question, the man said good-naturedly, we met you at the club, me and Richard. We had a joke. Moms-to-be also want to relax. Then we went to my place here. We had another drink and your friend went off with Richard and you stayed with me. You know, I love pregnant women. Can you take me home? Selena's voice was giving me a headache. Come on, come on. What are you doing there? You said yourself that your husband doesn't care about you. The fat man smiled good-naturedly. Stay. I'll take care of you. I can see how bad you feel. I like pregnant women. Baby doll, I understand, but I don't want someone else's baby, and I don't want you to have one with the way you live when you're pregnant. The next time Selena woke up, she was already in the hospital room. Her head ached again, her mouth tasted of metal, and her lower abdomen felt completely empty. Finally, a familiar voice sounded somewhere nearby. She turned her head with difficulty and saw Edward. 
Where am I? She whispered with dry lips. At the hospital. I searched the whole park before I found you. You were in a terrible state. You were beaten up, bleeding badly. What's up? Did you have a good time? Selena turned away and cried. She spent two months in the hospital. After what happened, the baby didn't survive. The chance of getting pregnant again was slim. Edward visited her in the hospital faithfully and tried to cheer her up. After she was discharged, he took her back to his house. A couple months later, the court held a trial where Selena signed the divorce papers without a word. Now she stayed at home, and even Edward did the grocery shopping. Every night, she waited anxiously for him to come home from work, afraid that instead of going home, he would go to a club where he would pick up a younger and more promising girl to have children with. This night, Edward was late. Selena dialed his cell phone again and again, but it was unavailable. She began to shake, tears rolling from her eyes, and suicidal thoughts ran through her head. She didn't hear the key turn as she sobbed. A surprised and frightened Edward rushed over to her. Selena, what's wrong? You're not here. Your phone's not answering. I thought what happened. She could hardly speak from sobbing. What's going to happen to me? The phone's dead, and here I am. Edward began frantically ruffling through his pockets. Finally, he found what he was looking for. I came for this. There was a ring in the palm of his large hand. Selena stared at the ring. What are you doing? Are you, uh, proposing to me? Yes, Edward smiled embarrassedly. Why do we have to live like this? You're a free woman now. But I probably won't be able to give birth to you, will I? Yes, you can. We'll cure you. The long, painful wait has come to an end. He's free. All he has to do is quit his job, buy the tickets and... What if she rejects you? What if she's been married a long time? Buck's friend Austin tried to talk him out of it. Why don't you take a vacation first? Go out, do some research, make some inquiries. What if she's already married to a native and raising a couple of mulatto babies? According to her mom, Jenny didn't do anything like that. What if she was careful to hide it from her mom? Why? What's the point of hiding her grandchildren from her grandmother, even if they are from a man of color? Her mother is a wonderful woman who has no color prejudice. Still, I wouldn't be in such a hurry to get fired if I were you. It's no big deal. If Jeannie doesn't want to see me, or if she's already married, I'll go back and find another job. I'm not bad at it after all. Suit yourself. Buck stood in front of a small two-story building, the first floor of which was a European-type cafe. The second floor was a branch of Jeannie's travel agency. Despite it being a day off, the cafe had few customers. He entered, ordered a cup of coffee and addressed the bartender, hoping that he knew English. Buck did not speak any other languages. Excuse me, but why so few guests? It's the rainy season. Luckily, the bartender knew English. The rainy season is about to start. Poorists don't like it. Buck nodded his head and sipped his coffee. He didn't know how to get the conversation to the director of the travel agency above the cafe. But the director suddenly helped him. Are you by any chance an American? The bartender asked. Yes, how did you know? Buck was surprised. Oh, I'm a good judge of foreigners, especially when they start talking. Smiled the bartender. And thanks to my new neighbor, the bartender pointed to the ceiling. I can recognize Americans right away. You seem to be so intelligent, scientists, but there is something primitive in you. It's barely perceptible, but it's there. Interesting. Buck shook his head. Then I am very lucky that your neighbor is American. I'm not very good with languages, and I'd like to see the country and the places I'm interested in, not the places that tourists see. You're in the right place. Miss Jenny is a customer-oriented person. She has something for everyone. Good, then I won't delay. Satisfied with his cunning, Buck climbed down from his high chair. I'm afraid you're not going to make it tonight. The bartender stopped him. Why not? It's Mrs. Jenny's day off. Her deputy is there in her place, but he doesn't handle such individual matters. It's okay. I'll try to make a deal. Buck was met by a friendly young man who spoke good Russian. What can I do for you? I need Jeannie, Buck said kindly, but at the same time demanding. Mrs. Jenny is off today, but I assure you, you can trust me completely. The young man answered without the slightest embarrassment. I'm a friend of Jenny's and I'd like to talk to her personally. The smile on the boy's face was replaced by disbelief. Then Buck pulled out his phone 
and showed him some pictures of Jenny with her parents, with him and him and Selena. Okay, I'll explain how to get to her house. The young man agreed slightly uncertainly. Ten minutes later, Buck was speeding down the highway to the ocean in a rental car. She was even more beautiful. The light tan and local clothes suited her well. Buck admired her as she recovered from his appearance. Hello, Jane. He wanted to run to her, grab her in his arms and kiss her until she collapsed in his arms and answered him. Hello, Buck. Jenny was struggling with contradictory feelings. She wanted to throw herself at his neck and chase him away, but instead she asked, How did you find me? It was easier than waiting for the day I could see you. You waited a long time. I'm sorry. I'll tell you everything and explain everything, if you let me. They talked into the evening. Jeannie started crying now and then, then laughing, then crying and laughing again. Buck hugged her, comforted her, kissed her and laughed. A worried Kahaya looked into the living room from time to time and didn't know what to do. Finally, unable to bear it, she ran after her husband and excitedly asked him to observe the guest. One look was enough for Surya to realize everything. He gently put his arm around her shoulders and drew her away from the drawing room door. My dear, it's as clear as a palm. It is our mistress's lover from whom she fled here and he found her. I don't think you should go to work tomorrow morning and leave early today. Don't disturb the lovers. Kahaya didn't believe it, but when she returned to the living room to ask when dinner would be served, her mistress Jeannie was passionately kissing the man who had arrived. Five years later. Tell me, Buck, does your squawk over the kids like mine does? Even I can only play with my own son under her supervision. But first, I have to shower, shave, and use odorless antiseptic on my hands. Edward grunted unhappily and sipped a little beer from his glass. I even started drinking less because, you see, it's bad for the baby to smell your breath. What's the smell? With a glass of beer. And the stronger stuff. I can't remember when I've had one. Selena's understandable. Your son's been too hard on her. That's why she's worried about him. Buck looked for Jeannie. Her spouse was smoozing peacefully in the chaise lounge, leaving the care of the twins to the grandparents. Salima and Kahaya were passionately discussing sunscreen for the children, keeping a wary eye on Selena's son and Kahaya's daughter. Mistress Jenny. Guram came out onto the mini beach belonging to Jenny and Buck, with a wide smile as always. Let's go to the table, the meat is ready. Everyone scurried about. Selena, shushing Edward, picked up her son and rushed towards the chala. Surya took his daughter by the hand and hugged his wife, heading towards the house. The twins followed, holding onto the long hem of their grandmother's skirt. Jenny and Buck were at the back of the small group. The man hugged his wife and tried to walk as slowly as possible. Buck, do you want everyone waiting for us? Jenny stopped. Just a little. He pulled her against him and kissed her with a long kiss. Then, pulling away, he said, How good it is that life has put everything in its proper place. How good it is that we are together. I love you. I love you too.